Justin. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, warning, the selfie game will be very strong in this one. And also, um, there will probably be some feels. So I hope you brought tissues. Um, how to build a better you using photography, specifically family photography. Uh, my name is Justin, and I am obsessed about psychology. I read way too many books on the subject matter, and I look at my habits and my behaviors, and I track them every day for about the last two and a half years. And what I'm after is how do I improve myself every day? What can I do different today that'll make me a better person or get to where I want to go tomorrow? And as I look for these answers, I think a lot of us, oh, thank you, no, it's fine. Uh, a lot of us, uh, you know, will we'll take the standard habit of browsing on the internet, looking up inspirational articles, finding personal growth uh, material, and we read it, and then we end up going back to reading our email and continuing the same day and just doing rinse and repeat and not actually changing anything. I'm out to change that. Um, I feel that uh, there should be an easier way. So I'm looking for the fastest, most effective, safest, and most fun way that we can actually create real positive change within us. And so today's talk is about photography and how that had a very powerful impact on me this, uh, this past year. Um, so I was in my therapist's office and she said, when was the last time you've seen yourself as a child? When, when have you seen yourself from 10 or 15 or 20 plus years ago? And I realized I, I hadn't seen myself in about 10 or 15 years younger than the year 18. And it was really strange because after digital photography came out, uh, when we, you know, in, in the year 2000, at least in my family and I think for a lot of people, we lost track of our physical archive of, of family photos. And digital photography did to our photo albums what email did to our communication. Reviewing it became a chore. If I want to show you a cool photo, I have to dig through hundreds of photos of parking spaces and receipts and all that garbage. I just don't care anymore. I don't bother doing that practice. So I started to look for these old family photos and I began a new practice. Um, Fortunately, my, my mother didn't live very far away, so I got four banker's boxes full of hundreds of photos. And I went through all of them, and I found all the photos that uh, had the strongest impact on me as soon as I looked at them. And I set those aside, and I started a daily habit. For about 60 days, 10 minutes every morning, I would look and cycle through these photos. Sometimes just me, sometimes family members, and also sometimes I would just stare at the same photo the whole time. And all I did was sit and listen and feel what came up during this process. And <clears throat> I had new thoughts that I had never had before. I had memories come up that I had completely forgotten. It's like, where did this you know, memory come from of, of, of me playing 25 years ago where did that memory go for the past 25 years? I don't know, but these photographs spurred this stuff. And it also brought a lot of emotions, at the full range from happiness and sadness and anger and everything in between. And immediately, I, I was watching my uh, behaviors change. Pretty much in just a matter of days doing this practice, I, became, uh, I began to change, and all the behaviors I was tracking was moving in the right, uh, sorry, a better trajectory. And I asked myself, why? What is it about these photographs that's opening up new resources for me that I didn't have before? And I believe it comes down to, um, oh, sorry, I forgot to go through these. Great photos, also photos I'd never even seen before of my family. So they were very awakening in that, in that sense. Why did it um, you know, affect change in me? And I believe it, 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 it rattled my beliefs. As I study psychology, I find that the way we interpret the world through our attitudes and our values and our beliefs is the strongest force that acts on our behavior. More than any tactic, more than any system or gradual change, what you believe in and how you interpret the world affects what you're going to do in this moment. And looking at photography uh, of your past rattles your beliefs. It shapes the structure. It turns over uh, your, your mind like an hourglass and it gives you the opportunity, if you're mindful during the process, to rebuild the structure the way you see fit rather than relying on it placing itself where it might have years ago. So it also works on four different uh, muscles of your consciousness uh, as it's impacting your beliefs. And we're going to go through them now. First one is emotions. You are guaranteed to feel something when you look at your photos. It just brings everything up. Lots of happiness, lots of fun memories, and then also a lot of painful ones and a lot of depression. In fact, I remember looking at this photo for the first time. My mother and I were going through our photos. Um, uh, we just pulled them out, and, and I looked at them, and she said, oh my goodness, you're so cute. 
And my first reaction was, Ugh. I looked at this photo and I hated it. I was overweight, I was unhealthy. At this point in my life, I was bullied, I was picked on, and I had the belief that I was fat and that this is who I was and that this is who I was constantly battling against to not be, okay? But then by sitting with these emotions, again, by processing them every day, you eventually get over them and those emotions can manifest and transform from sadness and depression and anger into happiness and acceptance. And so that transformation is possible uh, by sitting with your emotions and photos spring that very quickly. Emotions make up 50% of your awareness if you think about just brain parts. If you're not tapping into your emotions as you try to make real change in your life, you're missing half your resources. So sit down with photos, study them, and accept whatever comes at, at you and just watch what happens. <laughs> uh, the next one is the narrative. So growing up, my brothers and I always got into fights. We would argue constantly, we would pick on each other, we would deny each other of toys, and we were just all out mean to each other. And I remember my parents, I remember them always having really, really high expectations of me, and I would always get upset about how they would choose to, to discipline me in different ways, uh, you know, if I was making too much trouble. And the weird thing is, is that I didn't find a single photo in my entire collection that lined up with everything that I just told you. But I held that narrative in me for years, thinking this is what growing up was like. And so this was a great reminder that it wasn't like that. In fact, every photo I looked at was us playing, or us exploring, or genuine connection that I feel like, you know, I didn't believe was there many times, but it always was. And so the narrative gets shaken, the story about how you, you got here, who you are, when you go back through your photos, this is your opportunity to reset a new narrative for yourself. And uh, that leads to the opportunity of using the witness. The witness is a muscle inside of all of us that when exercised, gives us the ability to observe our thoughts and our feelings from a distance, rather than getting wrapped up in the feelings and the emotions and the stress of the moment. And when you look at yourself, you are practicing and exercising the muscle of the witness because you're witnessing yourself. I see myself now, and I, I'm 30, he's probably five. This is a, a, a teacher looking at a student, also both directions. But you think about new thoughts, new, new perspectives. What was I thinking in that moment? How was I feeling? What was I doing? And also all the people around you, what were they thinking? What were they doing? And every time you have a new perspective, your witness gets stronger so that in the moment today, you have more control and more stability to regulate your emotions, regulate your mental health, and just observe what's happening around you. I've been practicing the witness for a long time, so for me, the greatest change came when I started to witness my parents when they were my age. And I'd never seen some of these photos before of them when they were younger, <clears throat> but when I saw them around 30 or even younger, I started to see how similar we were. I immediately felt a new connection with my parents that I didn't understand before because I wasn't of the same mind as I am now. And seeing them as 30 explained so much about who they are and where they came from and how I uh, came to be who I am. And so it turns out my parents are remarkably, amazingly normal, <laughs> like me. <laughs> and they traveled and adventured, and they were just as silly as I am, and they were after just as much connection as I am. And that, that oneness that was developed as I looked at more and more pictures of my parents being themselves at my age and understanding what they were after, um, that really led to the final step, uh, uh, the final muscle that was exercised for me, which is forgiveness. Um, Sorry, just want to read something really quick. Um, where was it? Yes, forgiveness. Uh, for, for, forgiveness is the healing power that you're able to access after you reconnect with your history. It's really the, the culmination of that reconnection is acceptance and forgiveness of everything that's happened. Um, I remember the narrative of my brothers fighting constantly and yet now, next time I'm in a conversation with my brothers, I'm gonna say, hey, do you remember that time we brought home a 20-foot Christmas tree? I didn't remember that at the time. 
you know, when I'm caught up in the moment of the excitement of, of, of the rush of an argument or, you know, those stressful moments, you just forget this stuff. But it's always been there. It's, in fact, it's defined the bulk of your history, at least for me, not necessarily for everybody, but, you know, for me. Um, and my parents, um, you know, I can read as many books as I want to on attachment theory and parenting styles and stuff like that, um, that, that tell me one way or another, but seeing my parents exactly as they were and how that is exactly me, essentially we're one and the same in terms of habits and behaviors, um, I realized that they're always doing their best. They always did their best. They've always excelled and, and did far beyond their best because if that's the mentality that I have, they clearly had that same mentality back then. So I'm very glad that they raised me with that mentality because it makes me very powerful today. And the last part of forgiveness is obviously forgiving yourself. And so <clears throat> I realized that by looking back on myself that I wasn't always uh, the way that I imagined myself in my narrative. In fact, I had once been really healthy and fit. <laughs> I mean, this guy looks like he lifts. And that's Superman pose right there. I mean, I gotta be, I, I just have to be happy about that. I, I love that photo. <laughs> and then also I realized I have always been brave. I have always just been willing to go out there and do everything since a very young age. And I don't want to forget that. I don't know how I lost connection with that over the years. I can now go back and see myself and visit that and incorporate that into who I am now. So today, I feel like a freaking rock star and I'm just rolling, and I'm having a great time with it now. So ask yourself, when was the last time you saw yourself as a child? If you haven't seen yourself when you were 10 years old or five years old in such a long time, go back and connect with it and just look at the photos and it will change you. It's really powerful. Thank you. Terrific.